Hi everyone. I wanted to share a few thoughts in this video today on uh, the question about fiction versus nonfiction film and what we mean when we say that something really happened in a movie. About 15 years ago, I made a short film called Laughter and Medicine. This was a short comedy about a medical student who comes home from, from medical school and his parents are excited. They think he's gonna be opening his own medical practice and launching a career as a doctor. And he, uh, but he comes home with his own plans uh, and his surprising news that he's gonna be abandoning the medical field to pursue his real dream, which is uh, performing stand-up comedy. Now this was, this was, as I said, a short comedy, um, and I played the medical student in the film, and my parents played the parents in the film. Now, shortly after I made this, I showed it to a, a friend and um, some people, and after the film was over, one of them turned to me, kind of in surprise, and he said, did that really happen? And I was really struck by this question, because of course I'm thinking, well, of course not. It didn't happen. I mean, it's a movie. It's a it's a I, it's a scripted uh, movie. You know, being acted and and performed and edited and all these other things. But it occurred to me uh, that for somebody who is not really aware of how a movie is put together, it's probably a little disorienting to see someone that you know uh, on camera, and especially when it's you know when that person is. Uh, playing, you know, with uh, the, the, the person's real parents are playing his parents in the film and it's filmed inside their house, you know, it, it can probably, it, it can be a little disorienting. And then it gets in, and then it gets a little blurred about like, well, what, how much of this is fiction? How much of this is nonfiction? How much of this really happened? Well, of course, the answer is on the one hand that none of it really happened. It's a, it's a script. It's, a, you know, being performed. Um, it's entirely a work of fiction. And yet at the same time, it did have to happen in the sense that it had to be photographed in order to make the movie. So, you know, I was thinking about this because when, um, when you make a film that, uh, where, where you're, you know, filming in your own house and elements of uh, your personal life are showing up on the screen, even if they're being used in an entirely fictional way, it still does create, a, I guess, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a tension there between uh, the fictional elements and the non-fictional elements. And I think if we, uh, you know, as somebody who studies film history, I, I think it's interesting to go back to the very earliest years of cinema and think about how this tension has always been there. If you look at the films of the Lumiere brothers on the one hand and Georges Méliès on the other, you know, if you ask most people, I think, who are familiar with their films to sum up the basic difference between them. They say the Lumiere brothers captured and filmed reality and Georges Méliès filmed fantasy. His films are, are fiction. And yet in both cases, whatever subjects they were filming had to actually happen in order to be photographed. You could argue that, well, the Lumiere brothers were out capturing real, you know, scenes of everyday real people and therefore represent um, a kind of a raw recording of reality, uh, maybe an early form of documentary, whereas Georges Méliès was uh, creating scenes of fantasy and fiction that had to be acted and, and staged and, of course, manipulated through editing uh, to create his special effects. And that's all true. But I think we could also put it another way, which is to think about, all right, the Lumiere brothers still had to go out and choose their subjects, um, they still had to make choices about what they were going to photograph, how they were going to photograph it, and uh, what they what they were try what they hoped to accomplish by by photographing it. You know, why was this particular subject worth filming, right? And similarly with Melies, uh, you could look at it a little differently, and you could say, uh, you know, yes, his works are, are fiction, and and. You know, their their works of fantasy in many cases, um, although he didn't work exclusively in that in that genre. But let's just say generally he did. OK, so. Um, but, you know, a lot of what he did, a lot of the way that he made those films and staged those films and pulled them off was using uh, 
tricks that he had learned as a performer on the stage, as a, as a magician. So in that sense, you know, a lot of, uh, although he was enhancing them with uh, editing tricks, you know, he still had to think in terms of, um, he was still creating kind, the kinds of illusions that a magician would pull off on the stage. And uh, look at just the way their films are shot. Uh, again, even though Melier's films are fantasy and you might expect them to be more dynamic in terms of how they're filmed, uh, in a lot of ways, his visual style was far more uh, straightforward than the Lumiere brothers because uh, Melies, if you've if you've seen his films, typically used a front a frontal view of 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 the action as if you're sitting in a theater with a kind of proscenium, you know, theatrical framing. Everything takes place within that space. Uh, if you look at the Lumiere brothers, on the other hand. Uh, very early on, they were using close-ups. They were using, uh, they were moving the camera by, you know, placing it on elevators or moving, um, uh, you know, train platforms, and uh, even beyond that, their their compositions and their shot choices are are uh, much more dynamic. And this is partly their background as photographers that they they brought this kind of photographer's eye to the films that they were making, and thinking about the. Uh, sort of creative choices that photographers make um, in in you know shooting any subject. So my point in getting into all these details is just that if you are, if you simply think of you know one is reality, one is fantasy, I think it misses a lot of the uh, you know what what really makes these films uh, still so interesting today, and it it misses a lot of the choices that go into either either approach. Right now, in a lot of ways, I think that this basic tension between the kind of the everyday subjects of the Lumiere brothers and the outright fantasy of Melies sort of split off and, and went into two different directions in cinema. Uh, it's a little bit beyond like what I wanted to talk about in this video because it you know we could go on and on and on about all these different ways in which film branches off and everything, but. I mean, to just make the long story short, if you think about the uh, idea of what it means when something has to happen in front of a camera to be photographed, regardless of whether you're t telling a really you know wild, fant fantastic kind of story with lots of elaborate costumes, props, special effects, or whether you're just trying to photograph um, everyday subjects and to, trying to find kind of the beauty in the in the everyday and the ordinary. Either way, uh, they represent a series of choices. And I think that's what perhaps people who aren't familiar with how a movie is made, I think that's perhaps what they miss, is that although one approach might be more um, obviously a work of fiction, more obviously a work of, uh, of fantasy, that regardless of what you're doing, you have to make these you have to make these choices that all filmmakers make. And it's only through making those choices that you can really pull off whatever it is, whatever approach you're trying to take, uh, you can really only pull it off successfully if you're thinking about these things and thinking about what is right for your um, subject. Anyway, I thought that was just kind of an interesting um, little story to share. I, I will always remember that because I was so struck by his, by his question, did that really happen? And, uh, you know, I think it, it really gets at some of the, the magic of movies, the illusion of movies, uh, that, that for viewers who aren't really aware of how they're put together and, uh, that that line between fiction and nonfiction is not as neat and as clear cut as it may seem. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below. Um, you know, whether you make fiction narrative films, whether you make documentaries, or whether you make something perhaps more in between. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you later.